The world spun around Leon like a mad whirlwind. His feeble body slumped in the wheelchair, weakened by the battle it waged against the sickness. His chest heaved with each labored breath, each inhale a struggle, each exhale a victory. Beads of sweat dotted his forehead, trickling down his lined face as he tried to focus on the task at hand, reaching for his scattered medication. He could see the bottle lying tauntingly out of reach, the pills scattered on the worn-out carpet like breadcrumbs leading to salvation. With a grunt, Leon leaned over. His gnarled hand stretched to its limit, the tips of his fingers barely grazing the bottle. His heart pounded, his body screamed, but he pushed, pushed till he could push no more. But the cruel laws of physics prevailed, tipping his wheelchair and sending him tumbling onto the cold. Unforgiving floor. A cry of pain tore through his throat, echoing through the empty apartment, a testimony to his solitary suffering. The impact jarred his frail body, adding insult to his already injured spirit. With gritted teeth, Leon dragged himself towards his medication. Each inch a mile, each second an eternity. The dull carpet bit into his thin skin, yet he pushed through the pain, a desperate soldier on a doomed mission. His hand finally curled around a pill, the hard capsule a hollow victory. As he lay on the cold floor, his body racked with pain and exhaustion. Leon found himself on the edge of the precipice, staring down into the abyss of the inevitable. He thought of Lamont, the boy he had raised, who had become the man burdened with his care. He thought of their harsh words, their shattered bond, and the guilt that weighed heavily on his soul. With a painful swallow, Leon murmured a prayer to the silent apartment, his voice choked with regret. I forgive you, Lamont. I forgive you for leaving. I forgive you for not understanding, for not wanting this burden. His words hung in the air, an echo of his unspoken sorrow. As the last of his strength ebbed away, Leon made peace with his impending fate, his heart heavy yet strangely light, his eyes fluttered closed, the cold floor beneath him becoming softer, the pain a little less biting, as the world around him slowly faded into the comforting embrace of oblivion. The twilight of Leon's life was an agonizing crawl. Every breath he took was a scrape against his raw throat, every beat of his heart a dull thud in his chest, an agonizing reminder of his isolation and suffering. He lay sprawled on the threadbare carpet, the coarse fibers pressing into his skin, offering him a cruel comfort in his solitude. His world had narrowed to the four weathered walls of the room, the cracked ceiling, and the stubbornly silent telephone. His eyes, once bright and brimming with life, were now clouded with pain and confusion. The world had become a blurry mess, a hazy painting with no color or form. He could no longer distinguish between day and night. The ticking of the clock on the wall merely a cruel jest, a mockery of his endless ordeal. The silence of the apartment was deafening. It crept into his ears, echoing the emptiness of his soul. He yearned for the sound of Lamont's voice, the clatter of pans from the kitchen, the quiet hum of the television. But all he was granted was the disquieting stillness, a vast ocean of silence where he was the lone mariner. Leon reached out, his frail fingers grazing the worn-out carpet. He found solace in the rough texture, a bittersweet comfort in the familiar. His body was failing him, surrendering to the relentless onslaught of his illness. But his mind held on. He clung to every thread of consciousness, every shred of reality he could muster. His gaze fell upon the door, the mundane barrier standing stubbornly between him and the world. His eyes held a soft desperation as they focused on the worn-out paint, the rusty doorknob, the quiet promise of return. He clung onto the hope that Lamont would walk through with his carefree laugh, his endearing scowl, his reluctant care. But as the hours dragged on, morphing into days, the silence bore down on him, a heavy, suffocating blanket. His mind wandered, echoing with fragments of memories, snippets of conversations, and a growing acceptance of his loneliness. Finally, 
As his strength waned and his spirit dimmed, Leon found a peculiar calm. He let his gaze rest on the door, a symbol of his waiting, his longing, his longing, his solitary vigil. There was no fear in his heart, only a quiet patience, a resilient hope. His frail body relaxed onto the floor, his heart laboring with each beat, his breath growing shallow. In the end, with his fading gaze fixed on the door and his thoughts on Lamont, Leon surrendered to the night, a lonesome figure bathed in the glow of the setting sun, forever waiting for the return of the prodigal son. The descent into delirium was a winding path, a series of torturous switchbacks, each deeper and darker than the last. Leon's body was rebelling against him, screaming in protest at every minuscule movement, every shallow breath, every beat of his waning heart. Dehydration gripped him like a vice, its cruel fingers squeezing every cell in his body, each throbbing ache a testament to his plight. He could feel it in his mouth, his tongue swollen and rough, his lips cracked and bleeding, his throat a barren wasteland. Each swallow was an agony, a gritty reminder of his parched reality. Hunger, too, was an uninvited guest gnawing at his stomach with relentless fervor. It was an empty pit, a hollow echo that bounced off his ribcage, a reminder of the meal's mist, the sustenance denied. Each rumble of his belly was a twinge of pain, a stab of longing, a sorrowful lament for the nourishment that was just beyond his reach. The apartment, once a sanctuary, a place of refuge, had transformed into a prison, the walls closing in, the ceiling bearing down. It was a cage, a trap that held him in its cold, indifferent grip. The musty smell of the old carpet was overpowering, invading his senses, reminding him of the confines of his reality. His mind, however, was not to be caged. It soared and dived, twisted and turned, spiraling into the unknown realms of delirium. Shadows danced in his periphery, whispering secrets and murmuring tales. They twisted into figures, morphed into faces, spun into scenes from his past, his dreams, his fears. The apartment transformed in his mind's eye, becoming a battlefield, a concert, a maze, a playground, a wilderness. He saw people from his past, heard snippets of forgotten conversations, relived moments of joy and regret. Each hallucination was a journey, a ticket to a reality that was not his own, a tapestry woven from threads of confusion, despair, and fevered dreams. Through it all, Leon fought. He fought against the chains of his illness, the grip of his suffering, the jaws of his solitude. His body was a battlefield, his mind a storm, his soul a defiant flame flickering against the harsh wind of his predicament. Yet even as his world spiraled, as his body protested, as his mind rebelled, Leon clung to a singular thought, Lamont. He was the anchor in his storm, the light in his darkness, the calm in his chaos. Even as he teetered on the brink of unconsciousness, Leon held on, lost yet hoping, alone yet waiting, spiraling into delirium yet anchored by love.